September 11th is a day we will never forget. And now, almost 20 years later, we continue to mourn the lives lost and to honor the heroes who stepped to the front lines on that horrific day and afterwards. Jerry Sanford is the author of a new book. It started with a helmet, a retired firefighter's return to New York City the day before 9-11. He was one of those heroes. He volunteered in the aftermath of the attack to serve as the press secretary for the FDNY, helping to preserve the legacy of his friends and his co-workers who sacrificed their lives on that day. He joins me now for his untold story. Jerry, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for talking with me today. Thank you, Martha. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. You know, let's start with what happened. You, you had retired after 30 years with the with the New York City Fire Department, and you'd gone to Florida, and, and you stumbled on a helmet down there that really set this story in motion. Yes, I, I retired, uh, unretired, excuse me, and the chief told me about a month later, we have an old New York City fire helmet here lay in one of our stations. So we drove over and I looked up on the wall and sure enough, there was an old fire helmet. Turns out it was from 1914 and it had on the front piece, red 4-2. So I knew immediately, Martha, that it came from the South Bronx and that was the, the my former boss, the fire commissioner's old firehouse. So you decided that you wanted to bring it back, right, to New York. So tell us about that part. Yes, it, the uh, I called the fire commissioner and... Uh, he told me, gee, I'd love to have the helmet back, but the house is being reconstructed. It's all pulled apart. It won't be ready for a ribbon cutting until 2001. Well, a year goes by, and then in July of 2001, they called me and said, Jerry, you better get the, your, your plans together and come, come up to New York. So we got the helmet, got the man who gave us the helmet, and we flew to New York on September 8th and then went to the firehouse the morning of September 10th, 2001. So tell me about that ceremony and about the people who were there. Well, it was uh, a number of retired firefighters came back for the ceremony. They also had built a beautiful altar on the apparatus floor in which one of our uh, Catholic chaplains, Father Michael Judge, was going to say Mass. But who would know at the time, but this was the last day, last Mass, that Father Judge would have said uh, because he was killed with another a bunch of my brothers that were at this ceremony the day before. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure you look back at that moment just frozen in time, right? All of those faces and no one had any yeah. idea what, what what would happen in just less than 24 hours. That's right. No, it was no, uh, uh, we had no idea. In fact, mm -hmm. just last week we returned to New York and I went back to Ladder 42 to revisit the helmet 20 years later. And it was very eerie standing on the apparatus floor and looking at the spot where so many of those men were 20 years ago. And uh, they were they were all taken from us the next day. Can you for people who don't know the story of Father Michael Judge, he was essentially the, the chaplain of the New York City Fire Department. Right. And yes, he was the he was the Catholic chaplain. Martha. Yes, we have a number of chaplains of each faith. And uh, Father Mike said mass that that morning for all of us. And uh, again, looking back at that day, 20 years later, it's hard to comprehend mm -hmm. that uh, this happened, uh, the attack happened in America. Tell me a little bit about what happened to Father Mike. Uh, he responded that next morning on September 11th, and he was in the uh, command center. I don't know which tower he was in, talking to the men, giving them spiritual advice. And I believe he had a heart attack in somewhere in there in the uh, lobby, that's, that's the word, in the lobby, I think it was the North Tower. And there's a, an iconic picture of Father Judge being carried out by first responders to a nearby ch uh, church. Yeah. But I believe he was listed as the first casualty of 9-11. Um, and I think they took him to a, a chapel across the street. Correct. It's a very moving story. And he really was just a larger than life character for so many people in New York. I have friends who he married and it seemed like he was just one of those people that wow. everybody in the whole city knew. <laughs> yes. yes, he went to many fires with me. I would call him up. He was a, a Franciscan friar. So I would call him up and uh, pick him up and we'd go to jobs together. The Untold Story continues right after this. So tell me a little bit about the role that you played and, and when, you know, how, how, when you went back to New York after 9-11? Yeah, I, uh, I flew back up 
And uh, I was back at the site on the following Monday, six days later. Uh, I couldn't believe, I thought it was uh, in a country across the ocean. I couldn't believe it was in my city that I had worked in for uh, over 30 years. And uh, it was just a strange looking down at the pile, looking at the firemen and, and the first responders, they looked like little ants. Don't forget, we were four, four or five stories high with debris uh, standing there looking down at them and they were going bucket by bucket uh, trying to, you know, this was still in the recovery uh, mode. This was even six days later, but we still had held hope that we would find uh, survivors buried in the crevices of that, of that terrible destruction. But as we all know, uh, that was uh, not to be found. There was uh, nobody. We, could, we didn't get anybody out except some firemen that were trapped. Yeah. So what, what did you start doing? What role did you play as the next stage of it started to unfold? Well, I was then assigned, I went back to my old office in the press office and uh, the commissioner said, I want you to work, start out working with Mayor Giuliani and his staff. So I went over to the pier on the Hudson River and uh, helped uh, getting in information from the site, how many missing, how many missing, uh, the ranks, where they were. And I, we did uh, news conferences every two hours with Mayor Giuliani and his staff. And then about uh, four days later, the commissioner said, look, uh, we're going to have to start to uh, bury these br uh, brothers. So I was then went back in the press office and assumed a terrible role of uh, going to wakes and funerals. I knew about half of the 343 firefighters that were killed. So it was very difficult uh, to go to all of those uh, funerals and uh, services. Do you know how many you went to? No, uh, Martha, I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was. So it was some of them are two or three a day. Mm. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't remember, but it was very painful. And then mm. on the weekends, I would just leave and go up to my daughters to be with my granddaughters. Mm. I had to just remove myself yeah. from the from that from the site. So, what made you want to write this book, Jerry? Well, it's an unusual story. You know, mm. here, here I am in Naples, Florida, and I find a helmet. And I've talked about it over the years, but my lady, Chris, we've been going together for over six years mm -hmm. and not, not knowing she had been uh, secretly recording my stories uh, on her phone. And then this past January, she said, hey, Grandpa, I want you to read something. And she had put 12,000 words together into this beautiful little short novel about uh, it started with a helmet. And mm -hmm. uh, I was shocked that she had uh, put it down so eloquently. And it's, it's a beautiful read. Um, in fact, the, what's the nice part about this is we're getting this book out to many school children, school, excuse me, schools where educators and teachers are passing the word and reading the book so that children will get an idea of what happened 20 years ago, the 9-11, because a lot of our youth don't know what happened. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I, I guess the last thing I would want to ask you is what you, your thoughts are about what has happened this week with the end of the Afghanistan war. And it's really a, a bookend 20 years later to what began. And the Taliban is, is back in charge. Do you have any thoughts on uh, that? Yeah, I, I can't imagine the pain that the families of our, of our brave military, the 2,400 service members that lost their lives and, the, and these 13 brave service members that were, that were murdered by a suicide bomber at the airport. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't, I can't even place myself there. I mean, to lose a loved one and now uh, we're out of there. It, it's, it's very hard to comprehend. Yeah. Well, Jerry, thank you very much. Jerry Sanford, it's, it's great to talk to you. It started with a helmet is a, his personal story of September the 11th and sort of something that was meant to be the finding of a helmet that brought him back home to New York. And then he ended up really filling a role that was so important and that really somebody only hey, that only he could fill having had such a close experience with the fire department of New York for, for 30 years. Um, he oversaw and helped to organize and carry out so much for these funerals and uh, for all of his brothers. So Jerry, we, we thank you for sharing your story and um, I hope that a lot of people read your book. Thank you, Martha. God bless you. God bless it's a you. To be on with you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure to talk to you, Jerry. And you haven't lost your accent down there in Florida. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in New York. I love it. It's great. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Take care. Thank you, Martha. Bye, Bye now. now.
You've been listening to The Untold Story. I'm Martha McCallum. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Make sure to rate and review. For more podcasts, go to foxnewspodcasts.com. <laughs>